Greetings everyone. In this video I would like to talk about the word matrix which we can now find in Exodus 13 verses 12 and 15 of the King James Version. But first I'd like to speak to those of you who are watching this video who may not believe the Bible has changed or may not see any Mandela effects at all. Perhaps someone you know has asked you to watch this video hoping that it may convince you that the Bible has indeed changed. Unfortunately this one video alone is not likely to convince you. However, in the coming weeks I will be posting more videos, some with much more compelling evidence than others. All I ask is that you keep an open mind and continue to watch as I lay out the evidence that I have collected. When looked at and taken as a whole, I am convinced that many of you who cannot currently see the changes will have your eyes opened. Okay, without further ado, let's take a look at Exodus 13 verses 12 and 15. Again, I will be using the Q Bible website because it has the strong word numbers right in the body of the text for easy reference. Okay, verse 12. Thou shalt set apart unto the Lord all that openeth the matrix, and every firstling that cometh of a beast, which thou hast, the males shall be the Lord's. Now verse 15. And it came to pass, when Pharaoh would hardly let us go, that the Lord slew all the firstborn in the land of Egypt both the firstborn of man and the firstborn of beast. Therefore I sacrifice to the Lord all that openeth the matrix being males, but all the firstborn of my children I redeem. Okay, see in verse 12 we have the word matrix. We see that it is Strong's word 7358. In verse 15 there is matrix again. It's 7358, so it's the same Hebrew word. Let's look at my scan from my lexicon for word 7358. And we see that the meaning is inner parts, especially womb, of persons. References Job 2420 and 3115. And of animals, Exodus 13, 2, 12, and 15. Now I haven't read Exodus 13, 2, but we will in just a minute. Okay, <clears throat> so I want to remind everybody that uh, whenever there is a reference given in the lexicon that these verses have been verified. And I'll go back to the lexicon preface. See, have, I've highlighted right here every scripture reference being verified when needful corrected. So we know that when Mr. Tregales translated this, that he looked up Exodus 13:12 and 13:15, and he verified that the Hebrew word there, that it was womb. Now, I mean, he would have verified in the King James Version that the English translation would have been womb. If it had been matrix, then there would have been some notation that matrix was here, but it's not. Now let's look at uh, 13 verse 2. Okay, Exodus 13:2. Sanctify unto me all the firstborn whatsoever hath opened the womb among the children of Israel, both of man and of beast, it is mine. Okay, we have the word again, the Hebrew word 7358, and the King James translators translated it as womb. So we know that they knew that the Hebrew word meant womb. Yet in verses 12 and 15 of this same chapter, they translated it as matrix. So the question is, when Mr. Tregales went back and verified the King James Version back in 1847, whenever he was doing this work, either the King James Version had womb in verse 13, 2, and 12, and 15, and he was correct in what he put down as the definition, and it has since changed to matrix in verses 12 and 15, or he went to verify these verses and somehow made a mistake. And that this mistake has gone on for over 150 years, Bible students studying and using this reference, and no one has ever noticed that the actual word in the King James was matrix and not womb. So, the question is, why would the translators translate it womb here and then translate it as matrix in verses 12 and 15? That makes no sense. Okay, so I know some of you out there, especially you skeptics, are sitting there and saying, well, 
uh, if you look here in the lexicon, it says, and of animals. Well, if you look in verses 12 and 15, he is talking about the first things that come of a beast of animals in verses 12. And in verses 15, again, it's talking about whether it be the firstborn of man or of beast. So whenever beast is referenced, well, they use the word matrix. And up here in verse 2, where it's talking about the firstborn among the children of Israel. So it's only talking about, uh, you know, children of Israel are man, so it's womb. Okay. Well, let's look over here in the Blue Letter Bible. Let's see. Let's go back. Okay. Here we have verse, I mean, uh, Strong's Word 7358. Okay. See right down here in the Casinas Hebrew Child Lexicon. This appears exactly as is in the scan that I showed. Okay. And the reason I'm going here is because it shows us right here that this word appears, is translated as womb 21 times and is matrix 5 times. Okay, so let's look at the other places it's translated matrix. For those of you who want to say, well, it's just because beasts, and that's why the King James translator is translated as matrix instead of womb. Okay, right here in Numbers 13, I mean, I'm sorry, Numbers 3, 12. And I behold, I have taken the Levites from among the children of Israel. Instead of all the firstborn that openeth the matrix among the children of Israel, therefore the Levites shall be mine. Okay, there is no reference whatsoever to beasts of any kind right there. And yet the King James, Verge, the King James translators supposedly has translated this word to matrix. So if you want to use the argument that it was translated to matrix for beasts and womb for humans, well that doesn't hold because right here in Numbers 3.12 it is talking about uh, the children of Israel and not beast and is translated matrix. And also, let's go back also for the skeptics, we see right here uh, the Strong's definition. It shows womb matrix. So again, for the skeptics out there, say, well, you know, the Strong's definition matrix is included in one of the defins, definitions. What you have to understand is that this is how the Mandela effect works. However the changes are being executed, the process is very thorough. Whether it is a Bible change or the spelling of a consumer product, virtually all historical reference to the changes are also updated to make it appear that it has always been this way. However, the process is not perfect. Usually residual evidence can be found if you dig deep enough. However, unlike most residual evidence, the Cassinius Lexicon is an authoritative source. This book has been used by serious Bible students for over 150 years. If the lexicon had been in error for all these years, you would have think that these errors would have been caught by now, and a revised edition would have been published. Well, that's it for now. In my next video, I'll tell you how I know for certain the Bible is being altered. See you next time.